Hello everybody, today we're going to be going over how to install OpenTS Arena, uh, which is a reverse engineering or re-implementation of the Elder Scrolls Arena. And recently there's been some updates to the renderer that you can try out, but you can't try it out from the releases. Right now you got to build it. You got you to build it from source and I'm going to teach you how to do that. There's three ways of doing this, three ways laid out. One is uh, with MSYS2 on Windows and another is with Visual Studio. But those two are kind of annoying in comparison to just doing it in Linux, believe it or not. Uh, so I think, or maybe I'm just used to it more. Maybe I'm just used to it more. That's why I feel about it. I haven't actually personally tried this. I think the Visual Studio one would be easier, like way easier than MSYS2. Uh, I might be wrong about that as well. <laughs> but we're going to be we're gonna do the Linux version. And how am I going to do it? I'm going to do it with a virtual machine. I'm going to do it through VirtualBox. I've downloaded VirtualBox. You just click it. It's very easy to install. You click a bunch of buttons. Just keep hitting next. And then... Once you're done with that, you're going to have this program and you're going to have the option to go to machine, click new, and you want to have like a new virtual machine and you want to select an ISO image. And uh, right now it's showing React OS. That's not what you want. Go and download a Debian based Linux distro such as Ubuntu, Kubuntu, Zorn OS, Linux Mint, or Lubuntu. And, oh, and uh, there's also other ones like Pop OS. Those aren't the only ones, of course. And once you're done with that, I'm, I'm going to use Lubuntu. That's why I got this open. Once you're done with that, you're going to go select it, select the ISO image for wherever you have that ISO install, make it tell it it says Linux, Ubuntu, whatever, that sort of thing. I already got a, a virtual machine set up, but something you should check is that make sure your processor is at least going to be assigned like a few cores. My, my CPU is a Ryzen 5 3600, so I've got six cores, 12 threads, and uh, I, I put in six, so it says as in six CPUs, which that in practice would probably mean three cores, six threads. Execution cap is like how much the CPU is going to run. Is it going to run 100% for each of those cores? Or are you going to just like, so if your CPU can do like 5 gigahertz, 100% would be 5 gigahertz for whatever cores are being run. If you got, if you were to put this to like 50% or whatever, then it would be going to 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, for the RAM... Put in definitely, wait, where did I put this? Oh yeah, here, base memory. Put in at least two gig, more would be better. I'll put in two because to show you how little you need. And we're, let's get into the virtual. Let's get into the virtual. So I've got Firefox open. And first things first, go download Elder Scrolls Arena from GOG.com. Okay, go, go, go do that. Uh, GOG.com Elder Scrolls Arena. Just go click that, go download it. And then once you're done with it, you know what, forget it. You, you can see uh, you can see my username. I don't, I don't care at this point. I'm signed in right now. Yeah, it's free. It's already in my library. You can go download it. And when you download it, it's going to be a Windows executable. Uh, so... You're going to need Y. So go to your download. Go open in terminal. And if you're on a fresh install of Linux, you're going to have to do sudo app install Y. And I already got it installed. So it says it's already newest version. But for you, it's going to say, do you want to install Y or not? Go press yes. Uh, that's going to be like 1.7 gigabytes or whatever. So it takes a little bit. And then when you're done with that, now we can go install. You would do Wine Arena install or whatever the executable is called. It's, it, it was way longer. I shortened it so it's easier to type out. 
and you press enter for that. I already have the program installed, so I'm not entering in that command. And now we're going to ask, well, where the heck is it installed? So go to your folder, whatever your username is called, and make sure you have show head and open. Now go to your .wine, .wine folder, double click on it, go to your drive C, and then go to your GOG games, and then go to Arena. Or actually, don't even do that. Just go uh, have this ready, okay? Because next, I want to open up another window, and I'm going to go to my documents. It can be in any folder. It can be in your home folder. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click, open in terminal, git clone, and then I'm going to copy-paste this link, and copy-paste it. I did Control-Shift-V, but you can also just uh, right-click, and it should let you, yeah, you can do paste selection. Git clone. This takes a bajillion years due to how GitHub is. Or sometimes it's really quick. And get this time it was pretty fast. Nice. And then. Uh, you want to go here. Go to data. Now that we have that arena folder. Go copy paste this. You don't really need everything in this folder. But it would be simpler to just tell you to copy paste this. Uh, 100 megabytes, not too bad, right? I would hope so. Um, now, in terms of data, the game data, we're good. But now we still got a couple more steps. So, go install these things. You will go copy this command. These are dependencies. You see, when you got a program, and, and you got to use like a bunch of Program libraries, though those are going to be dependent. See, the program libraries, especially if it's not part of the standard programming language, um, those are like things that give you that allow you to do more stuff with the program you're writing. So to over, that's like a super simplification, and um, they're called dependencies because your program depends on them. <laughs> but um. Yeah, uh, that, that, I, if you're not a programmer, just, just think of it like that. I don't want to get, get too much into the theory. A library has a bunch of functions, and you can use those functions to write a program easier rather than writing all those functions yourself. Okay. And I'm just going to paste. I already got this stuff installed once again. But, you know, everything's the newest version. And now that we're here, okay, now that we're here, uh, we can all, uh, we can do CD, the Elder Scrolls Arena, or once again, if you don't like typing in commands, just go, yeah, we're, we're so you're, if you're in the documents, go here, right click, open in terminal, if you hate to, if you hate typing in commands, you can do that. Okay, now. These time, uh, ignore these two. You don't really, really need them. But pay attention for here. Pay attention for you. So we got CMake. I barely even understand how CMake works, but it's the, uh, typing in this command is pretty easy. The only thing you need to pay attention is that you got like three options here, or not four options. Debug, roulette, release generic, no LTO. I don't know what this is. Release generic and release native. Re release generic is so it works on everything. Uh, release native or like everything on your CPU platform. Don't go building on an Intel CPU or AMD CPU and then expect it to work on a Raspberry Pi. That's not happening. Uh, but, you know, if you compile on a Ryzen CPU, it's going to work on an Intel CPU most likely. Release native is going to target specifically your computer. And since you're not a big shot, you should probably use release native because that would mean maximum performance. Yeah, maximum speed, use release native. And then it's going to do all this magic. And now we're going to do make J8. Uh, so it can use all your cores and stuff. If you, you can just type in make, but then it only use one CPU core to build the program. So I want to type in make J8. 
and so you can view your computer purring with task manager. I forgot what it's called here. Okay. Well, I guess it doesn't know what the system monitor maybe is called. Well, there, there, there's a task manager here of some sort. What's QPS? I wonder if that's what it is. And uh, while you're compiling, you can probably tell the PC is acting a bit sluggish. Uh, don't worry too much. Oh, that's also why you don't want to assign all your cores so that uh, you can still actually use your main PC. I can just go to Windows' own task manager and can see that since I put in six cores, half of my CPU is working pretty hard right now. While the other half is chill. Okay, so that was a terrible idea. Do not use two gigabytes of RAM. Use, uh, someone's gonna give it eight gigabytes. I don't care at this point. It was making a lot of use of my hard drive, my poor hard drive. I think uh, two gigabytes is too little. Okay, I'm back. Let's get a compile for real this time.
how cool we're finally just um and now let's see where is that executable so here's still or, oh wait this is it did i just run this probably not Oh shoot, where is this supposed to be then? Uh, um, oh, maybe it's just case sensitive. Let's try that again. There we go, make sure it's capitalized. Oh, we've got it working. Oh yeah, F4 is something supposed to do something. Oh yeah, so F4 is showing me the frame rate. This performance, this 25 FPS, is not as good as the... Uh... It's not as good as if it's native. Do not be fooled. I'm getting 20 FPS at like 1080p. That's uh, a bit misleading. A bit misleading. I'm pressing F4, by the way, that it still popped up. So... Menu creation and all that stuff works. Do not fear, for it is I, Rhea Silmane. Listen to me, there are no others left to carry on this fight. You have been left in this cell to die. Take our thoughts. Anyways. So, I'm gonna cut the video, okay? I'm gonna cut the video. I'll show you what the performance looks like. Native performance. We're running this through a virtual machine. It hasn't run as good when it's in a virtual machine. If VMware was still easily accessible i would have recommended you that virtual box is the best we've got but i have linux natively installed on this computer as well so i'll show you that